Hey y'all, I want to show you how I built my raised beds. I have four of these and they are each three by six feet and they are 20 inches high. I got these made by a neighbor of mine who is a carpenter. So that was really cool to um, just get those made really conveniently. I started each bed with lining it with fabric adding cardboard to block weeds, adding logs and sticks and other things that will break down over time. And then finally adding my main growing medium, the soil. I'm stapling the fabric liner along the bottom and the sides of the bed. Cardboard, as I mentioned earlier, will block weeds and provide a protective layer around the bed. This is where it gets a little bit complex. I'm calling it logs and twigs because that's what I've seen while I was doing research and that's what I originally planned on applying to each bed, but that just became very difficult to find <laughs> offhand because I don't have that much space and I can't just go to the forest and find the, you know, logs and things on my own. But I did use what was at my disposal so I'm calling it logs and twigs, but it could honestly be any biodegradable material that breaks down over time, a long time. This is important because um, materials like this provide aeration and drainage. If you fill a bed this tall with just soil, you'll be spending more time and more money just to fill it. Um, so it's best to fill the bottom of your bed with whatever you have at your disposal. I'll give you some examples of what I'm using. I'm gathering dead branches and leaves from the preserve behind the property. I also used pine bark and used this opportunity to get rid of some food scraps. I brought out each bed several weeks apart, and that's because I wanted to make sure that I had um, acquired enough materials to begin that bottom layer. So more cardboard, more logs, more twigs, um, things that I've just been acquiring over time. I did that because it would be nice to have it sort of collecting materials before I know I'm ready to start adding the soil layer. That means every raised bed is different because I was acquiring different materials over time. For instance, I had some dying banana leaves that I needed to remove and I added that to one of the raised beds. Weeks later, my fiance and I did a landscaping project and I added some dead grass to another raised bed. So each of these are pretty different from one another. So as you can see, it's more than just logs and sticks, but that's what you'll find if you're Googling how to fill a raised bed like I was all summer. <laughs> of course, if your raised bed isn't as deep as mine, which is 20 inches, you can probably skip this step because most vegetable plant roots will max out at 20 inches deep as they grow. Next up is soil. I mainly use a mix of compost, peat moss, and perlite. Compost provides nutrients for the plant to grow. Peat moss helps the soil retain its moisture. And perlite is there to prevent soil compaction or when the soil gets too hard for the roots to dig deep. I usually add all three in equal parts. 
And the combination of all three makes for a light and fluffy moisture retaining soil. I also add in grass clippings if we have those around. I have a new friend in the garden. This is my friend Hopper. Next, all you'll need to do is get your seedlings into the beds. This summer I planted tomatoes, cucumbers, basil, and zucchini. Cookie, don't get lost back there, girl. So here are two of four of the raised beds. As I'm editing this video, I have all four prepared and ready to go. The summer garden is about finished and now I have so much fall gardening to look forward to. See you in the next video.